In this episode of Go Fast Brett, what does a fuel pressure regulator do and how does it work? A fuel pressure regulator's name pretty much gives away what it does. It basically just controls fuel pressure that gets to your engine's injectors. It's necessary to have a stable and accurate fuel pressure behind your injectors because basically when the ECU fires that injector, it needs to know that it's sending the right amount of fuel into the engine so that it accurately controls the air-fuel ratio. Now the important thing to understand is we need to take the manifold pressure into consideration. So because the injector is sitting in the intake manifold and firing the fuel down into the intake runners, the tip of the injector is subject to the boost pressure. So let's say your fuel pressure coming in from the rail is three bar, but let's say you're running one bar of boost in your intake manifold. Now the problem is you've got three bar pushing the fuel in, you've got one bar trying to push it back out. So effectively the differential pressure across the injector is actually only two bar. So that's where the fuel pressure regs job comes in. It needs to reference the manifold pressure and that's what this reference port is for. You'll find all fuel pressure regulators have this. Because the fuel pressure regulator monitors the pressure in the manifold, it actually adjusts the fuel pressure in the rail so that you have a consistent differential across the injector. So if your boost is one bar, it will actually increase the pressure in the rail up to four bar so that you have a consistent three bar of pressure across the injector. So because we're now able to control the differential pressure across the injector, Regardless of the manifold pressure, when the ECU tells the injector to fire, it will know exactly how much fuel is going into the engine because the pressure is always consistent. Okay, so let's have a look at the components involved in your fuel system. So we'll start, we've got a fuel pressure pump, which is usually mounted in the tank in the back of the car. Now that sends the fuel up the fuel lines into the fuel rail. Of course, we've got our injectors sitting in there, firing into the manifold. At the exit of the fuel rail, that's where the fuel goes into the pressure regulator. So it usually goes into a side port on the body, and then there's a drain port at the bottom, which basically just sends the fuel back to the fuel tank so it can start the whole process again. So how does the fuel pressure regulator actually control the pressure in the rail? Now the pressure doesn't come from the fuel pump itself. All the fuel pump is doing is just pushing fuel through the lines. Now inside the regulator, there is a valve that's attached to the diaphragm. Now that valve controls the opening of the outlet port. So it's a lot like putting your thumb over the end of the garden hose. You turn the tap on, leave your thumb off the hose and the pressure is pretty much zero. But as you try to block the end of the hose, you're still getting flow, but you've actually generated pressure in the pipe. The harder you try and close the end of the pipe, the more pressure you generate. So that's how the fuel pressure regulator works. But the next question is, why on earth would you want to replace the one that already exists in your car? Well, there's two reasons. One is flow, and the other one is adjustability. Now, let's say you've turned the boost up on your car, you've done a mild power increase, and your injectors are just about running out of capacity. To save putting bigger injectors in there, it is a feasible solution to just increase the fuel pressure a little bit. It's not the best solution, but it is a way to get a little bit more flow out of your, your injectors without having to replace them. The flow limitations of the factory pressure reg come into play when you upgrade your fuel system. So for example, if you switch over to E85, which requires much more fuel flow, or if you're running much bigger fuel pumps than your factory one, eventually the limitations of the factory reg will be exceeded. If we were to install a bigger fuel pump in the car, which we can simulate by turning the tap on harder, you can see that even though I'm not blocking any of the flow, the fuel pressure is actually starting to rise. And it gets to the point where there's so much fuel flowing that I can't control it with the valve anymore. So in this case, we need a bigger fuel pressure regulator. Now, please note, the limitations of the factory pressure regulator are not the maximum amount of fuel pressure it can run or anything like that. It's actually to do with how low it can make the fuel pressure. So for example, you put a massive pump on there and it's flowing a heap of fuel through your system. You actually need the drain or the outlet of the fuel pressure regulator to flow a lot more fuel to be able to keep the pressure low. This effect is especially noticeable when you've got a large fuel pump and a small factory regulator, and the engine's idling or cruising when the injectors are not firing a lot of fuel into the intake. So that means the regulator has to bypass a lot more fuel to keep the pressure in the rail consistent and where it should be. If the pressure goes too high in the rail, the ECU is going to have problems controlling the injectors at low, at low loads, and then you might end up running rich. 
Now that's where switching to a larger fuel pressure regulator can help make sure you have a consistent fuel pressure. So a larger fuel pressure regulator doesn't necessarily deliver more fuel or flow or pressure to the engine, but it does make sure that you have a consistent fuel pressure at the rail, which is where you need it. 